first time. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. So you're joining me on a trucker rant. Yeah, we're gonna rant about things. We're gonna rant about stuff because sometimes when you're in a truck by yourself, you just gotta rant about stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, what are we ranting about today? Well, something that came on my mind about, well, since I'm a, obviously a Pokemon collector, I thought about like rating services as one sh probably should. But what about grading services? Well, when you toss it into PSA, SGC, BGS, CGC, you got some options. Those are the big four. Those are the big four. Those are the ones that I would actually send stuff to. And throughout this, you know, what I've kept hearing throughout the community is that if you want consistency, if you want the you know, your, your prices to be consistent, you want the best value, you go with PSA. And I believed that when I first got into all this. I believed that PSA was just that golden standard, as everyone holds it up to be, and that, well, you know, that's the thing to do. You just, you submit to PSA. When I first got into this, which wasn't that long ago, a couple months ago, three months ago at this time, I don't know, you know, but that's all I heard about. That's, you know, that's, I just knew that. So I signed up for P PSA. Uh, we pulled that Charizard from our God Box episode where we opened up a celebrations box and we got the base set Charizard out of there. And uh, through that uh, PSA, we paid like 50 something dollars to get it done. Granted, the card was worth $80. So I was like, well, this is a okay investment. Now granted, we don't plan to sell that card because it's the very first biggest pull we've ever had. So yeah. <laughs> we're going to keep it. it. It's a memento. That being said, though, just, uh, you know, it looks good in the slab. It really does. It's, it's, it's a vintage card in a vintage slab. And maybe you kind of see where I'm going with that when I'm, I'm saying vintage. But as we started collecting more and got into it and, and I started hearing more about CGC because CGC tends to put itself out there in maybe possibly the wrong way, but, you know, is what it is. Then I heard about BGS and the black label system, and even CGC has a pristine grade, and SGC with its tuxedo black slabs and all this other stuff, and I'm like, man, these other companies are looking good. Like, wow, these are awesome. Like, why am I working with PSA? <laughs> And time and time again, I get told, well, it's because, you know, PSA is that golden child. They're the best of the best. You gotta grade with PSA because they're the best. You just, you know, if you want the true value out of things, you, you go with PSA. And then I started doing research. Now, granted, I'm in a truck, so I'm not gonna have all my research. Now, go ahead, fact check me if you want to. You should, you should fact check me. But with PSA, you know, it just seems like it's an archaic company. And I'm like, how did these people stay in business? Like, how are these people still doing the things when BGS and P, uh, uh, CGC and SGC, they all have these pristine grades available to them. You could potentially have a pristine card, whereas, whereas PSA just has a straight 10. Just has a straight 10. And on top of that, their cases don't look good. They're small, they're thin, they're shaded, they're, their label hasn't changed in the freaking 20 plus years that they've been in business. I don't know about you, but I've never seen a company, ever, keep the same thing around for 20 years without changing it to meet the times. And that's what like struck me, like why are people putting PSA at such a high pedestal? And then I started digging a little deeper and started realizing that it's these half grades. That I don't know why that, that these other companies thought that 9.5 is the best you could ever get. I don't know about you, but when it comes to, I don't know, the Olympics, when it comes to any major sport, 10 is better than 9.5. <laughs> 10 is better, baby. 10 is better. 
so why did you never realize like there had to be some sort of realization because some of these companies like Beckett and SGC have been around just as long as PSA and then you have to wonder to yourself like so you've seen what PSA is doing right and why they're getting so much success and I think that complacency with those companies is why they didn't get on the gravy train the story would be much different if SGC BGS and of course CGC, although they're a recent company, of which I don't know why the heck they never started with a 10, but nonetheless, went with this 9.5 grade scale, and were literally riding the coattails of the success of PSA. But then I started thinking about it even further. Now, granted, BGS, CGC, and SGC have 10 grades, but they also offer the pristine level, which PSA does not do. And I'm like, why would people send to PSA now? Why would people send to PSA now when there's these pristine grades that people can get? And if we see a BGS black label, and I'm going to probably use Moonbrion for the example with this because it's the best example. It's the most well-known card out there. Everyone who's anyone that's even remotely familiar with Pokemon knows what the Moonbrion is. It's the Evolving Skies, Umbreon VMAX, alternate artwork. It is the most expensive card in our current uh, modern sets that I can think of. You can tell me I'm wrong if you want to. But, uh, <laughs> you know, so if you send it to PSA and it comes back a Gen Mint 10, you can be like, oh yeah, this is like a $1,600 card. This is great. Oh, I'm so glad I sent it to, to PSA. Why? Why did you do it? One, it looks terrible. It looks terrible in that slab. Look, there's here's the PSA 10 slab. Boom, there you go. All right, take a nice good look at it. Now here's all the other slabs with Moonbrion in it. Damn, boy, looking good. They looking real good, aren't they? I would rather that Moonbrion be in those slabs than a PSA slab. Do you know how many potential Gen Mint 10 PSA cards are out there? that possibly could be a black label BGS or a gold label pristine with CGC or SGC and made people, especially if they're planning to sell it, it's, we're looking at this at the market standpoint, even collectability. I'd rather have a pristine and like, I would love to show pristine cards on my shelves and stuff. Nonetheless, that's just more like, look how much more cool my collection is with these pristine cards. But I think there's a level of fear here. And PSA is the problem. Yeah, PSA is the problem. Half grades. Like I said, the nine and a half, the eight and a half, seven and a half, six and a half, whatever, whatever have you. Nobody likes those. Nobody wants a half grade. And I, hey, you know, I'm a test to agree. I don't really want to have a half grade because when you get into half grades, you kind of have a scenario of like the glass is half empty, half full kind of thing. And when you get those type of philosophical mindsets on that stuff, you you will lose money. And a lot of it. Because if we look at like price charting here, and they do have nine and a half grades, that a nine and a half doesn't equal a ten. It never will. And it and it shouldn't, because well, ten is obviously the best grade you can get, especially now. The best grade you can get with all companies is a ten. So getting a nine and a half sucks money out of you, as it should. It should. But it shouldn't be only a couple dollars difference between a nine and a nine and a half. And that's because of PSA. PSA is basically saying it's either a nine or it's a 10, baby. And there's nothing in between. So if you grade with us, you're most likely you're gonna get a 10. Well, that sounds a little strange, doesn't it? That you're most likely going to get a 10 with PSA? But it's true. Because their grading standards are a little mm, fluttery, if you will. Well, that, that's, that's not right. They, they grade perfectly fine, and I'm sure they do. But here's the point. They don't have a half grade. So if your card exhibits just even a little bit better than what they would grade a 9, it's a 10. And people want that security. They want that just that security that they have a 10. But you want to know what? You're lying to yourself. You're absolutely lying to yourself. You know how many 10s are out there that are realistically probably and should be a 9.5? since we have this grading scale and that's the problem we have this grading scale and one company is ruining it or you could go the other way and say three companies or more are ruining it because we you know what they need to get rid of the whole half grade thing but here's the thing 
Half grades show integrity. Time to show you some integrity. And they show true value of your card. So, like I said, it's a half full, half empty type of mentality uh, when it comes to these half grades. And people don't want to deal with it. They just want the whole thing. It, it's an all in or nothing, man. I, I'm either a nine or I'm a 10. Well, let's just say, okay, what if all the companies took away their half grades? All right, well, you know, then we're going to be up to PSA level standards and some of these cards that are, eh, we'll still give it a 10 because by our standards, it doesn't really meet a nine. And so it's better than a nine. So therefore it's a 10. Like it's, it, it's so confusing. And, and here's the thing though, I would, and then, ah, so if you were to ask my personal opinion, I believe that the half grades need to exist because I view that a true 10, a true gem intent. You hopped over the hump. You got over the hump, baby. You got over that .5 grade. You deserve the 10. You earned that 10 with your card. It's earned, baby. Yeah. So, I prefer the half grades. I don't mind getting a 9.5. That means it technically is better than a 9. It is better than a 9. Oh, well, it's not a 10, so you just lost value. So what? So what? So what if I lost a little bit of value? That's the game we all play. That's the game we play with all these grading services. And I would rather my card be judged more harshly, of which, in the turn of things, a 10 with CGC, SGC, or BGS should actually be worth more than a PSA 10. Really? You think that way? Yeah, I do think that way. Wanna know why I think that way? Because I made it. I got over the hump. I got over that point five. I was able to have that company with their discerning eye and their equipment and everything else that's involved with grading with them. I was able to pass over that and truly have a Gem Mint 10 car. I would buy a CGC, SGC, or a BGS 10 graded slab over a PSA any day because that card is truly a 10. A PSA 10 to me is a freaking lie. This is the competition that PSA has inadvertently created, or I don't know how it's not been created. To be honest with you, I don't know if anybody even thinks about this stuff. Look at yourselves, look at yourselves on the inside. Say that you wouldn't be able to say, you know what, yeah, then you know what, that makes sense. That makes sense. So yeah, I will buy and I will put my cards in any other slab than a PSA, unless it comes to vintage. Because again, the PSA slabs are archaic. They're old. And this, so so we can move on from that. Because it's kind of getting all over the place. So let's really delve into PSA and why I don't want to work with them. And to, to my personal opinion and everything like that is not dogging any company. With PSA, you gotta, if you want the perks with PSA, you gotta pay a $100 in membership fee. Why? Why am I paying them a $100 membership fee when CGC and SGC, and I don't know about BGS, but I'm going to assume that one too, don't have membership fees? And their pricing is lower. Oh, because even then after I spent $100 on a membership to get access behind a paywall with PSA to get access to a bulk grading service that costs $15 a card, I can just go with SGC not pay $100 for membership and get my cards grant $9 a card and have better turnaround time. Oh, crazy, I know. Absolutely crazy. I, I, I don't, I literally don't get it. I don't get why people are willing to spend that cash. Because PSA, because PSA, because PSA what? This, this is like some granddad boomer stuff that's like, oh, well, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Well, continue down that path, PSA. Continue down the path of being archaic and not up with the times. You should have already had a half grading scale because that would prove that your grading is on par with everybody else. On par, not better or worse, on par with everybody else. Unless you come up with all sorts of new grading scales like a 9.8 or a 9.2 or some shit like that, then yeah, okay, your grading, your grading has definitely upgraded if you're willing to do that. But the halves, the halves are just fine. All right, PSA, halves are just fine. Upgrade today, slab, man. I am tired of looking at a cloudy, small, skinny slab with a red little outline label on it 
that's unimaginative. It's antiquated. I said that correctly. It's antiqued. And it just nothing looks good. Nothing looks good in the PSA 10 with modern. Look at it. Look at look at these evolving skies. Okay, Dragonite V, Rayquaza V Max. Look at the uh, the Neuvern V in a PSA slab. It looks terrible. It doesn't belong in there. It doesn't look right. It looks absolutely terrible. Now, look at these same cards in SGC. Yeah, okay. We're looking good. What about CGC? Hell yeah, look at that. Crisp, clear, crystal clear. Good labels, man. How about BGS? Hell yeah. Man, that's looking far. Looking far or dark. The, the bulk service should not be behind a paywall. The bulk service should not be behind a paywall. That bulk so service should be available to everyone. And it should be $15 a card just like it is. Well, that's crazy. Well, then why? Because guess what? If PSA wants to keep its membership fee, then there should be an actual discount for doing so. My bulk service should be $9 a card right with your competition. You actually feel good about having a PSA membership. <laughs> Jeez, man. There should have been no reason to say, oh, well, our slabs are good enough. People are doing business with us. Why change what's broken? You know, it's not broken. Why change it? Dudes, like, again, looking at these other companies, they are on fire. They look great. Their slabs are awesome. Why would you not want to go with them? And then, you know what? PSA could up the game. And I'm sure many of you would agree with this. PSA could have two different slabs. What? Explain yourself. We'll be back because I got to load up some crap. A few moments later. All right, Pokey Rockers. We're back. We're loaded. We're ready to get up on the road and go, baby. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. PSA and how it can upgrade itself to actually be relevant. There's going to be so many people that are like, it is relevant. It's like, it's so relevant. Like, how can you dare say it's not relevant? Because it's about ready to not be relevant. Again, this is my personal opinion. As a new collector, yeah, sure, I can't. My, I'm as old as Pokemon itself, as far as that's concerned. But, you know, I didn't really get into the Pokemon collecting game until three months ago. So, I've got plenty of stuff to catch up on. And really, I would say that my viewpoint is pretty valid because I'm a new collector. And I, I don't know about these the history of all these other grading companies and things like that except for their current potential issues or how they conduct themselves or whatever it may be but looking at it from the perspective of a new collector PSA just is not a good deal at a collector standpoint I don't see the worth of it at a market standpoint maybe a little bit different I, again I'm a new collector I don't have this crazy amount of money and things to, to, to just buy all these memberships and stuff we're already played with memberships am i right <laughs> netflix hulu hbo max paramount so on and so forth like we we don't have the time we don't have the money or time for more memberships and all this other stuff and so the membership fee really shouldn't even be there but make the membership fee worth it and again i'm, I'm in a truck okay i can't just look up information so i'm going to throw up some stuff here okay so with the membership fee and without the membership fee. So here is PSA, if you were just Joe Schmo, which is me, uh, throwing up some cards over to PSA. There's the price point. All right, well here's the pricing with and what services are available to you with membership and the associated cost for that first door, not $100, it's $99 if I believe right. Okay, well let's throw up BGS. Well here's BGS and anything associated with that that of course you know you can make your own comparisons to it and you shouldn't be doing these comparisons i shouldn't be the one telling you to do this stuff but hey maybe you just need someone to tell you and i'm here to tell you i tell you what now how about cgc here's their pricing of services and things and then lastly here is sgc now i don't know about you but the reason why i want to go with sgc is it's beginner friendly I don't have to have a membership. The card pricing, the bulk is already unlocked. I can send bulk to them. 
and it's nine dollars a car. That's one of the cheaper services. And does that mean that they're less quality? No. It just means that they're being competitive. They're bringing people like me into this grading system a lot easier. I need some tender love and care, boys and girls. I need a little hug. I need a little something, something to get me by. And <laughs> and SGC is really doing it. They're definitely showing. Oh, shout out, stupid truck. They're really showing that, hey, you know what? You might be a new collector. We have a good grading system, a great looking slab. Here you go. Here's, throw the dog a bone. So, what was this magical thing that I was talking about with PSA that they could do to outpace everybody else? And why I told them to hang onto that vintage slab? Well, precisely that. It's vintage. Vintage cards look great in it. Like, it's awesome. Vintage cards look great. Why else would I send my uh, vintage celebrations Charizard, base set Charizard to PSA? Because it looks good. It looks good in that slab. Plus the red label, too. It just kind of matches everything, so it is what it is. Plus, I didn't know any better, so it went to PSA. I was just fortunate that it was a Charizard. But you should have a time cut off. So early 2000s and then before, so like back into the 90s, 80s, 70s, and so on and so forth, so essentially the beginning of trading cards, keep that vintage slab for that. Have it like a special vintage thing. And guess what? Maybe don't put the half grades on it. Keep the whole grades. That probably is best for vintage. And that's probably why PSA has also been really good for grading cards for other people because grading vintage cards and getting a Gen Mint 10 be a hard thing to do to get a Gen Mint 10. So therefore those half grades weren't really necessary because either it was passable, that's why it gets a 10, or eh, this is more of a 9. I understand the mentality when it comes to vintage cards because quality, when you go back in time, wasn't that great. Isn't that great. I mean, it's still not really that great today. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's not really that great today. But the material quality, print quality, artistic quality, I mean, dear Lord, like there are some beautiful cards out there. And like I said, they don't belong in a PSA 10 vintage slab. They belong in a PSA modern slab. So after a certain time period, they should move forward and say, oh, this was made in 2020 or 2016 or 2010 or something like that. Yeah, we need to go ahead and put in a, the modern slab. So, like, just imagine, like, a dark navy blue. Like, a dark navy blue blue slab. And it's got, like, if it's a 10 or a 9, it's got a holographic number on it. And the, the border is holographic, keeping some of that PSA, like, like, this is clearly a PSA slab. So, it's got, so where the red is right now, it would be a silver border. And it would be holographic if it was a 9 or a 10. Um... If it's an 8 to uh, a 6, 8 to 6, it's like a silver foil. That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? And then at a 5 or below, it's just like a silver print. Like, just it doesn't shine, it's just a silver print on a dark navy blue uh, uh, label with a silver border. Dude, that would be so much better looking. And then get rid of the fog. Get rid of the fog, maybe put a black background, dark navy blue background or just make it crystal clear, make it a little bigger, make it a little thicker, make it nicer. You got the money, okay, dude? You got the money in the development team. Hell, hire me. I'll help you out, PSA. I got some ideas, okay? I got some ideas, bro. I can help you out. And then the pristine label. Oh, dude, imagine a black label with PSA. Gold holographic 10 with a little gold holographic star next to it. All the letters are gold foil. And then the border, the line that we all know of PSA that's right now red, but would be gold holographic foil. Dude! Sign me up! Sign me up! I would love to get a PSA 10 pristine black label gold print holographic slap. Oh! Why haven't y'all done this yet? But yeah, there's so much stuff that PSA needs to catch up on with these grading services for me to even consider them. Uh, unless I have vintage cards. If I get vintage Pokemon cards, they're going to PSA. 
they're going to be the same because they look good in the vintage slab. Ugh. But for all the modern stuff, it's going to CGC, SGC, BGS, and I really haven't decided who I want to go with yet, like make my main grader. I'm still doing research, I still got a lot of stuff to do, I'm still new to the hobby, but SGC sounds like a really good place to start, just because the slabs are big, they got the black liner in them, they look pretty, modern cards look good inside of them, and it's a good way for me to kind of like feel out like other companies. CGC, maybe. Uh, I do like their labels, and of course they have the new grading standards and stuff, so that's fine. BGS, I'm really wanting to, and I, I need to, of course I've already thrown out the pricing for all of you, but I need to get back home and actually look at BGS a little bit more in depth, because I don't know if they're much better than PSA right now with their pricing. I really don't. I, I'm ignorant, so that's what it is. So, tell me, tell me, what do you think in the comments below. Do, do you think PSA, your your thoughts align with mine? Like, yeah, you know what? PSA could use an upgrade. Do you think PSA is just the, the, the tits and you just, oh, they're never not going to get my business. I don't care if they ever upgrade or change. Just let me know. Throw it in the comments, okay? Throw it in the comments. I want to know what y'all think about all this. Thank you for joining me on this trucker rant. If you like this type of content with trucker ranting, believe me, I got a lot to rant about, and I got a lot of time behind the wheel, so not a problem to talk to y'all about whatever you want to talk about and give you my personal opinions and things, so rattle off in the comments down below. Let me know what you want to hear. Let me know your thoughts. I want to know, people. I want to know, but keep on rocking, punky rockers. Yeah.